Thank you again. Uh, okay, this time I, I will present a work which is entitled New Miniaturized Microwave Cavity for Rubidium Atomic Rocks. Okay, first of all, as a context of the work I've been doing, uh, I will speak briefly about what rubidium miniature atomic clocks are and give you a brief state of the art on the existing solution and uh, finally propose a new solution that is now protected by a patent application and draw some conclusion on the work that has been done. So, as an overview, I would say that the physical working principle of an atomic clock is based on the interaction between a, a natural, an electromagnetic radiation and the electron of an excited atom, which in our case is the rubidium atom, with quantized energy levels. Uh, this interaction is used to, uh, let's say, to give a, a clock signal to lock a, a relatively less precise uh, kind of force oscillator here. Here you see the full structure of an atomic clock, very uh, schematized. Uh, in our case, we use the, this specific microwave clock transition that happens for rubidium at around the 6.835 gigahertz for in, a, in, or, in order to allow these only these uh, neat microwave clock transition we will see that we have to respect uh, several criteria and specifications okay uh, as for the state of the art of miniature rubidium atomic clocks uh, several are based on the chip scale uh, kind of atomic clock that mostly uh, that are mostly based on a method called the coherent population trapping, which will not be treated here, but uh, our approach will be based on another technique uh, that can be found in literature, uh, who is interested in more detail, and it's called double resonance, and allows uh, for more, uh, for better stability. Um, here you see what is the device which is currently available in commerce with could be uh, appreciated the dimensions and uh, on the left some solution proposed the Servatoire de Neuchâtel that served as a starting point for our investigation. So uh, the system architecture is of an atomic clock is based on two packages uh, which I will not treat in full detail. I would just say that the electronic package is uh, uh, basically the, gives the output of the atomic clock, while the physics package that you can see more in detail here is what we are investigating, trying to conceive, conceive a new compact microwave cavity. Here you see the laser head that allows the uh, interaction between the light beam and the uh, rubidium atoms that are enclosed in these cells. And uh, which is uh, itself integrated into the microwave cavity. Here you see the static field that enables uh, the, uh, the physics package to be sealed from outside and the magnetic shield that uh, allows protection from other uh, present field in the vicinity. So for the requirements for the microwave cavity, we can uh, list the, the fact that the resonant frequency has to be at a certain uh, frequency to enable the atomic transition for rubidium. The magnetic field distribution has to be of a uh, precise geometry that you see here very uh, schematized, uh, which, is which has to be collinear with the laser beam and the static field direction. In our case, the quality factor has not to be too big to uh, avoid the cavity pulling effect, which is basically uh, the, the tuning of the frequency uh, with the, an increasing quality factor uh, number. So, um, for what regards the parameters that allows us to characterize a microwave uh, resonator, we can list the resonant frequency, of course, and the quality factor that uh, uh, 
know, uh, with which we can appreciate the contribution of non-infinite uh, conductivity on metal walls and the dielectric loading. For this kind of application, in particular, we have a figure of merit which is called the filling factor, uh, through which we can characterize the goodness of the magnetic field inside the cavity for our specific uh, uh, specifications. You can see the definition here. Uh, as we found during the study, in our case, a new parameter can be defined because we have a cell that is very, uh, that is much smaller than the cavity itself. So in our case, uh, the field orientation factor defined as follows. Uh, would be more suitable to uh, characterize the field distribution inside the interesting polyp. Uh, for the proposed solution, um, uh, with good approximation, a model that can we use is the loop gap resonator model. Uh, in literature, several uh, descriptions can be found. We uh, attain to the to this uh, kind of description for the for finding the uh, resonant frequency, of course, uh, several parameters uh, influence that, including the geometry, the shield influence, and some correction factors that might uh, take into account the fringing field and the limited length of the electrode. And we saw that this model actually uh, suits fine for engineers to, to give a first approximation of the behavior of the device, but of course simulation is needed to reach what we finally found, which is a uh, more complex structure. So, uh, as you see here, okay, I will not list uh, thoroughly all the specification, but uh, essentially we had uh, okay, uh, limits on the uh, field that has to be of a certain level. The volume of the resonator should be around this level to uh, compete with existing uh, devices. The specification of, on the power loss. And uh, last but not least, the fixed cell dimension uh, to which we have to stick to, uh, to propose new solution, which is this kind of cuboidal uh, 3D cell, which is uh, in uh, reality uh, 6 of side for 5 millimeters of height. Uh, the proposed solution that we, uh, that we were investigating is indeed a loop gap kind of resonator uh, printed structure. You can see here the uh, uh, the 3D LGR printed electrodes, which are these in metal, uh, which are sustained by a dielectric uh, um, substrate. Uh, this uh, resonator encloses the cell and it's fed by a coaxial uh, printed uh, coupling loop, which is uh, positioned on a thin layer. And you might see here the enclosure of this device, which is approximately 10 millimeters, and inside uh, there is a, a detail of what the holes for the tuning screws are uh, are like. Of course, uh, to allow the, the frequency to be tunable after the device being mounted, the, the method we chose is the, probably one of the simple, at least on the mechanical point of view. Two sc tuning screws we would see uh, after how they are capable of. Uh, tuning the frequency of the device when it's mounted. So as for the parametric study, we, influence, uh, we studied the influence of several geometrical features, of course, and the cell presence and the cavity aperture. As a sample result, here you see one of the uh, investigated parameters, which is the gap between the electrodes, and how the field looks like once the uh, the resonator has been tuned, here the field is visi uh, visibly collinear with the uh, laser beam direction as wanted. So, uh, on prototypes, we uh, first uh, run a full characterization and fine tuning. You see here a comparison between the simulated model and the measured one. And on this side, you have um, you can appreciate how the tuning screws are capable of tuning to the right frequency, which uh, again is 6.835 gigahertz.
uh, once characterized the, the device, we, of course, had to run uh, real tests uh, on and simulate a real atomic lock uh, uh, operation for these. The setup is shown here. Uh, you have the laser module that sends the laser beam through the optics to the physics package that you can see schematized here and in the real device here. Uh, among the spectroscopic results, you can we can uh, uh, list the double resonance signal, which is uh, which was done to actually appreciate the atomic clock signal. Uh, the Zeeman transition to see how neat was the the atomic clock transition thanks to the device being used, and finally the most important the, the study on the uh, as up to now the short term stability that gave a very important result. Uh, as a sample, I would just skip to the stability result to give you an idea. Uh, of how good was the, the result being achieved, I would just say that compared to other uh, devices present in literature, the uh, atomic clock using our loop gap resonator with the 3D cell attained the best stability, at least for the short term and we would see for the long one. Uh, so as a conclusion, I would say that Okay, uh, we achieved the development of a new loop gap resonator based cavity that is uh, nowadays called the micro LGR for 3D rubidium cells. And our device, the micro LGR, was proven to be suitable for integration in, an, uh, in a miniature rubidium atomic clock and is now protected by a patent application. So, I will thank you again.